Before we start our podcast today, we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting. The Wanjuri people of the Kulin Nation and pay respects to the elders past and present and emerging. Okay, so yeah. stay with me on this for yeah, a moment. Yeah, I'm with you. Because if you were... <laughs> If you would come at times and you were frustrated or angry... Or just with, really angry. Or just really rage. angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there would be the occasional so rage. So much rage, it was pushing you through the wall. A little bit at times, <laughs> yes, let's just put that gently. Hello, my name's Kevin and we're here today talking about... What are we talking about? Listening. I'm here with Janine <laughs> and... So I'm going to be listening. Hi Kevin, it's Janine here and today on our podcast we are talking about listening. One of the things I noted is that we've taken a different tact with this. We've been talking about listening to our bodies, listening to the body of the person that we're talking to, all those that we're talking to. There's a few other things we talk about. Yep. which is the things that we tell ourselves. And I really think that we're just at the tip of the iceberg of this topic because I think it's such a big one. So welcome and enjoy listening to our podcast today. Yeah, enjoy. Okay, so I'm listening. <laughs> I'm a great advocate for listening to ourselves and listening to our bodies. If I'm not listening to my body and listening to myself, listening to my thinking, then I can't do anything about it. And I think sometimes that we can be so focused on the other person that the risk is that we're not actually listening to ourselves. And if we're focused on the other person, then we're likely to get frustrated and or anxious because we can't change them. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's clear. And it took a long time for me to learn that listening involved listening to my body. That was... alien concept to me I remember Mm. talking to you or listening to you talk about it Mm. and I had a separation Mm. of body and mind well so it's it's quite fascinating because in order for me to work with you around listening and listening to your body I had to listen to mine so okay so stay with me on this for a moment I'm with you because if you were (laughs) If you would come at times and you were frustrated or angry... Or just with, really angry. <laughs> or just really rage. angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there would be the occasional rage. So much rage, it was pushing you through the wall. A little bit at times, <laughs> yes, let's just put that gently. Then I would need to notice my body. And if I focused on you, the, the risk is I would be trying to fix you, trying to make it better. But I need to listen to me and notice, oh, I'm uncomfortable or I've got a counter experience where I'm backing off through the wall or whatever's happening. And so I would need to calm my body and calm me down and listen to me. Otherwise, what would end up happening is you'd come in enraged and then I would either be anxious or angry as a result and it would escalate and so it was really important for me to calm my body and then we could with a calmer body the hope is that you would calm Mm. and then from that body we could talk about what happens and it might be that you are legitimately frustrated with me or angry with me or it might be that something else is happening for you and and if I think about myself other times when I've been upset or angry with someone, friends or family or whatever, 
then again, I need to calm myself in order to come from that calm place to be able to talk rationally or well, to be able to, the hope to get some way to resolving or having those first conversations of resolving an issue. Yeah, so, so particularly about the anger for me, I think that was the first thing with you. Was... What did you hear me say that was helpful? Well, that first time, I walked into your your studio just full of rage and nothing to do with you. And I thought that what I was doing was perfectly all right. And after a very short amount of time, you said, you started saying things like, I can't hear you. You need to stop. Hang on a second. I can't hear you. And eventually I went, oh, it's okay. I'm not angry with you. And I wasn't. It was about something else. And you said, yes, but it's like there's a wall around you. And I said, yep, there is. But it's okay. You can step over it. And you said, no, it just pushes me away. That stopped me. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realise that my anger, my feelings, could have such an impact on another person. Yeah. Because I thought that if I was talking about it and it wasn't aimed at you, then it would have no impact on you or you would be standing with me. So I had to learn. Yeah. I had to learn that there was a way to express it and the way that I learned to do that was by learning, you know, so where's this feeling sit in your body? You know, it would be in my stomach or in my head or in my heart. Yeah. And connect. Learn to connect my head with my body, my mind with my body. Mm. Yeah. And it's fascinating that process because often anger anxiety as well and quite a few emotions but anger in particular is that rage or anger around i'm disconnected and i'm disconnected from you and desperately wanting to connect but the interesting thing is what happens with anger is it pushes people away so it does both Mm -hmm. so it is I really want to be close to you and I'm not getting what I want and come and connect with me and if you valued me or if you cared for me, you'd be close to me, get close and why aren't you close and you should want to cuddle me and (laughs) hug me because I'm such a good person and I'm worthy of that and you won't. But the actual (laughs) anger in itself does the opposite to what's actually what the person is wanting so it actually pushes the person away and and and, you know that's just not attractive you don't want to hug that and it keeps me disconnected from myself as well yeah but i mean as as i'm (laughs) demonstrating that you know i think about my my own self when i'm frustrated or angry i'm doing the same thing i'm kind of pushing the person away but actually what i'm wanting is a hug or i'm wanting closeness And it's really hard to resolve that in your body, but unless we're able to calm and soothe our body, and even if it's take a moment by ourselves and go, it's okay, I can come here, and do that beautiful self-talk that goes, you know, being angry is not going to help the situation, getting mad at the person is not going to help them to be closer, it's not going to soothe that part of me that really wants closeness but also to express the anger in a different way to be able to sit and talk about it yeah rather than rage yeah, yeah. rather than be with it but yeah. talk about it yeah. And yeah. 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 yeah yeah absolutely really important for me and then learning to talk about you know not that the feelings were all those feelings are new to me but they, I, I didn't I didn't connect with my body and I didn't connect with me, myself spiritually either mm. and I do now and do I do it automatically all the time? No, I don't. I work at it, you know, which is what we were talking about earlier. Mm. I work at this stuff. It's a journey. I do too. Yeah. And I think I haven't had your story or your past. I happily give it to you. <laughs> I've got my own. <laughs> don't worry. Oh. <laughs> and I feel so grateful in the industry that I've been in because I feel like I've got so many tools to look after myself and be the the best or the best version of a mother, partner, friend, sister, etc., etc., that I can be to those around me, daughter, all of those things. 
So, yeah, <laughs> that doesn't mean I don't mark it up, because I do. <laughs> Narcotics Anonymous talks about that sort of stuff, like, you know, how to come from addiction yeah, and go to working out who we are mm-hmm. and pushing the, the rest aside that's not us, making amends where we possibly can, and, and then learning, you know, just, just learning, continuing to learn who we are. Mm. And just, yeah. Yeah. It's a process and I believe... There was another bit there, but I've forgotten what you were talking about, so it doesn't matter. Okay. I was going to say, and I think I may have said it before, is it takes a lifetime to sometimes figure out who you are. Yeah. And to be who you are and to find out what fulfills you. And I feel for the young people around me and my children and their partners as they're in that journey... And I can remember that journey for myself and I'd like to take it away from them, any of the suffering and the hard times, but I'm not sure I can. And perhaps they need it. Maybe. You know, not Mm. you know, in some way. Yeah. Maybe maybe not need it, but it maybe it can't be avoided, if I put it that way. Yeah, I didn't mean it yeah, that's a better way of putting it. Yeah. Mm, Yeah. yeah. And that's what I was gonna say before, like, you know, going from what you were saying about being a a better partner and a better friend. Mm. And, mm. And, and NA teaches us that, T- taught me that anyway. Is that, you know, I come from all of that trouble and all of that trauma, away from, out of addiction, find out who I am, and then able to be, you know, be able to be a, a good dad, able to be a good granddad, able to be a good brother. Well, yeah, anyway, trying to be <laughs> a good brother. And on and on and on, able to be a good friend. Mm. Yeah. That's why I said it that way in terms of doing our best. And yeah. s- sometimes doing our best, sometimes we that's a bit mucked, mucked up or, or whatnot. We don't do great at it. Mm. You're laughing at the dinging. So I'm laughing at my phone. Oh. just keeps talking to me. I should have turned it off. I'll think, turn I it off. I think you did before, didn't you? No, I put it on silent, but um, it's still doing oh well. some stuff. Never mind. Yeah. 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 At least Ash is quiet today. Ash is exhausted. <laughs> She's got nothing to say. <laughs> she was running around with the beautiful little whippet, her friend, the this bark. morning on the cricket grounds. So, in order to listen to somebody I've got to be listening to myself so if you say to me Kevin you say can we do this now Janine and I've got five things on my plate and I'm going shit how am I going to do these things then I can't listen to you in that moment and I can't do the thing you want to do because I'm so preoccupied with the five things that I want to do or I've got well, that's a perfect mind. example because I could hear what you would say. What would I say? Oh, so if I said, you've got to stop, do this now, you'd say, yeah, I can't do that now, Kevin. But what I can do is, yeah. That's true. I would say, I didn't always do that. What I would have done, and I think often women are trained to do, is to go, yes, all right, yep. And they'll put those, all those five things that they've got, they'll just put them on the back burner and I'll come and I'll do the thing for you because particularly, particularly men, is that we'll, we, better, we better look after him because he might get a bit stressed and a bit angry and so then we would be responsible for that. So there's kind of a, an overflow into people pleasing because I can relate to that. Yeah. I still get a tug, you know, so when somebody, you know, like the people I was talking about this morning, so when they push me, and push really hard, I just, oh, I, yeah, I, I've got to do that for them. But of course, I don't have to do that at all. It's like you were saying, mm. the first thing I need to do is look after me. Yeah. And looking after me grounds me, makes me very present, and then I can see clearly what's going on and what, what I will do and what I won't do. Yeah. 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 So it is around giving yourself permission to say no giving yourself permission to say yes and all of those things and and if I can't do that 
then I'm going to be stuck in conflict. And the conflict that I have within myself is going to impact those that are around me. Now that's a bit convoluted and a bit confusing. What did you hear? <laughs> just then or the yeah, whole thing? Just then. <laughs> it's a big concept. Well, both of those things, whatever you do, it's going to impact other people, but one's going to impact them. Ah, oh, that's a good point. I don't know. One's going to, definitely one's going to impact them in not a good way. That's what you're saying. It's going to impact you in yeah. a good way too. And the other one is more favourable. Who knows what the outcome will be? Yeah. 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 Outcomes are really not up to me. They're up to the universe. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I can organise and do things, and you know, like we're talking about, be listening, be as present as possible, and listen and respond, or just listen, and I respond, and whatever that conversation is that I'm having, the outcome of it is, is definitely not up to me, and I don't think it's up to me and the other person, or me and the other people. All sorts of things happen. Okay. But still yep. valid to be talking about listening, you know, yeah, yeah, and being able to listen properly. So you're talking about a particular philosophy, which not all our listeners would buy into. They should. <laughs> Here comes okay. yell. They okay. definitely should, or else. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Oh, okay, yell. But if I was to pull out the bits from that, what yeah. I'm hearing is saying is the parts that you can make a choice on is your role and yeah. what you do and yeah. what you choose. And then we come back to that conversation of responsibility. And oh, the other thing I was going to say around what we were talking earlier around listening is that the only person that I can control is me. That's kind of what I meant. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So as soon as it's more than me, I can do my very best and I can have the best intentions, which I hope I would have, but the outcome, you know, I can't have any control over that. Absolutely no. none at all. No. So, so if I say to you, nah, I can't do that thing you wanted today, Kevin. Then I might get really upset. You go, you oh, no, 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 no. That's not really to do with you. And no. I guess it is to do with me if I'm getting upset. Yeah. 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 And then if I was again to listen to me and I was uncomfortable with you being upset, I might say, well, it sounds like you might need to take some space or, you know, or I've got some other things to do. And then what would you do then? <laughs> you mean what would I have done or what I would do now? <laughs> what would you do now? Oh, I wouldn't have got that antsy about it now. So No, you wouldn't have. <laughs> I would, um, I don't know, I might say something like, okay, I was hoping it would be different. But all right, so we could do this or this and yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes when I've gotten a no and I wasn't ready for it, or I can have a little tangent it, sometimes. Yeah, I, yeah. I'll, I'll accept it in the moment and I'll go away and then have my own little tangent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was listening to somebody talking about anger. Yeah. A couple of nights ago and. I didn't agree with, I didn't say anything, I didn't agree with what they were saying. Or what I heard them say, it's interesting, isn't it? So here I yeah. am listening. But what I heard them say was that should not be angry. You're allowed to be angry, but you shouldn't be angry. So already there's like, a, what oh, are you talking okay. about? And I think what they meant, it's not okay to be angry, to talk to somebody angrily, whether or not they're the target of your anger or not. Yeah. And I thought, no, that's wrong. My experience of that is wrong. That's, I should be able to talk about it. I should be able to confront the person I'm angry with. I should be able to talk to you or other people about what I'm angry. Otherwise, I keep it locked inside me. And at some point, you know, it's, it's going to be bad for me. Okay, yeah, yeah. agree. Can I be more specific? I don't know. I have to think about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. That it's really important to be aware of your anger and be with your anger and express it but I do not want to be aggressive or aggressive's not okay yeah so that's possibly what the person was talking about but they wanted to bury it it was like the you sense can't do both. Of, yeah 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 it's like yeah no 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 anger's not what we're here for 
No, feelings are, we're talking about anger, but any feeling, feelings is what we're here for. We're here to learn about them and we're here to, well, I think we are, you know, I'm, I'm still learning about them and learning to stay with them. Yeah. Good ones, bad ones, ones that I can't work out, doesn't really matter. Stay yeah. with it. Yeah. But what, what I would say around no. the, the anger push is... push to somebody else. <laughs> Are we finished? <laughs> I don't know, it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Anger's often the first thing that you experience when you're not getting what you want. But that's really good information in terms of I'm not getting what I want. And what I would say is when you listen to the primary feeling underneath, because anger's a secondary emotion, listening to the primary emotion underneath then you can start to recognise, do I need to do anything here? So, yeah, so these days yeah. I get more irritated than angry. So I'll be like, oh, I came in here today and I've been irritated. My way of doing it is exactly what I did this morning. That's it, gone. Because then, exactly as you were talking about, I can then look at, so what's underneath there? What is it that I'm feeling? Yeah. yeah. You know, feeling a bit sad, feeling a bit abandoned, a bit rejected, yeah, disappointed. And often those things have got nothing to do with the interaction that's just happened. No. They've often got to do with the past. And yeah. so projecting it onto the thing that just happened is not going to be helpful. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be an overexpression of, yeah. of, it's like, of what's happened. So it's like um, hitting a pin with a hammer. It's not going to be yep. effective communication and the person on the tail end of that is going to go, what the, you know, what just happened here? I just said no around something or I can't do something. What's, what's sincere, yeah, so, you know, seriously wrong with that? I get irritated and I tend to stop before I respond. It's like, so instead of doing exactly what you just said, it's like somebody says something or does something and irritates me and... So, oh, you don't need to do that. I'll take a moment, whether that's you know a few seconds or a few minutes or a few hours or mm. a couple of days, whatever I need, and then I'll decide. One, do I need to dis- to to react? No, I don't. And usually, and two, you know, is there a response that I need to give here? You know, just you know, just, so oh, I didn't explain what's tied in with underneath the irritation. And once I've discovered that, how do I want to? respond to the other person and also how do I want to respond to me that's much more important to me Mm. usually Mm. it's like you know how am I looking after myself in this my critics anonymous literature says somewhere I don't know if it's the literature or the fellowship but you know it's it's often talked about that we don't look after ourselves first we look after others I just said no we look after ourselves first because if I don't look after all the things we've been talking about here today, if I'm not able to do that, then how can I possibly extend to somebody else? Let me support NA, but also support oh, this doing. conversation here, <laughs> is around that, it, again, it's both. So the more I'm able to stop and listen and look after myself in a healthy and wellness way, yeah. the more I'm able to do that for you. Okay, i put it a different way. Yeah. So... I can't think of an example, so I won't do an example. If I start off a conversation ignoring what's going on with me and being there for the other person, that's just not going to work. Yeah. It's not, it might work for them, unlikely, Yeah. because I'm really not here. That's that listening thing around yeah. listening twofold. Yeah. yeah. So and you yeah. explained it quite well, like, you know, am I ready to do this? Am I going to put everything down? all of the five things that I was doing and be present for whoever it is, for me or for one of your daughters or for a friend or someone who's knocked at the door. And, you know, my experience of you is that you probably won't. Yeah. yeah. Then if I say, yep, yep, I'll do the thing yep. and I go and I be with you because I'm helping you out do the thing that you asked me to do and I've put my five things down, the risk is Resentment. that I could get resentful. Yeah. 
And then I can be resentful of the relationship that we have, yeah. and that's going to impact our ongoing relationship. God, this it's, is a good subject. And also, the other thing is, is I'm not going to get my five things done, so I'm going to be stressed when I'm doing them. Yeah. And if I'm doing them for me, ha- what kind of value am I putting on myself? Yeah. Probably less. Then I start to listen to my self-talk with like, oh, damn it, you've done it again. And why, why did you say no? You just need to say no. Just get <laughs> over it. Just say no and, you know, not be responsible for everyone else's emotions. Oh, my God, stupid woman. Mm. And then that starts to get that nasty stuff. And then we're becoming an internal persecutor. Not good. Not good. So we need to be honest. Honesty. I don't know how you got honesty out of that. Because it's, it's <laughs> about talking to ourselves honestly about what, what we want. So, yeah, yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that people get I don't want to drop easily. everything that I'm doing. So he goes, oh, look, I'm sorry. No, not at the moment, but... Yeah, so that's coming back to that internal listening. Which is honest. The, the opposite to that for me is listening to the internal thing which says... You better do that, otherwise they won't like you anymore. That's dishonest. That's me being dishonest to myself, isn't it? Yes, and therefore dishonest to the other person because you're you're saying, yep, I'll drop everything for you. And Yeah. yeah. I probably haven't looked at it in terms of an honest thing because often people aren't that clear with themselves and they haven't been aware of what they want and the difference is is that often that first thing around going yes 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 whatever you want or that people pleasing stuff is trained behavior around this is what I need to do this is what I should do and that takes some time to untrain yourself yeah and so I I probably wouldn't call it dishonest but I would call it just being unaware and starting to honor yourself and the interesting thing is some people can say no easily but if no is a difficult thing for me to say and I say no to you despite your reaction (laughs) then what I'm doing is I'm actually saying I'm not here to absorb your emotions I'm not here to make you feel good about yourself that's up to you and that's your responsibility I'm here to look after myself and in that way I'm actually inviting you to do the same thing for you that's really clear yeah yeah it's a again it's a big concept and so I I imagine we'll talk about this some more yeah because we're really only starting the topic yeah um, and it's kind of a we've touched on a few lots and lots of different things yeah So how about difficult listening, Janine? What if a friend phones me up and I know before the first word comes out of their mouth that they want something, but they say it in such a way as like, hi, Kevin, and I just want to slam the phone down. Because (laughs) normally the conversation with them would be, what you up to? But how do you how do I be not slam the phone down? How do I be present and listening in that situation? Oh, great question. I think it's around really trusting yourself. So if this is a pattern that the person has run you up and you know they're gonna want something of you, so perhaps you've felt manipulated, perhaps you've felt used, or perhaps you just are not not ready to give them what they want in the moment, but you know that they're going to ask. So what I tend to do in those situations is, again, if I'm listening to myself, I might be very upfront and I might say, is something going on for you? Would you, is, is it something you've wanted? So I might be quite upfront about that and then the person can respond. Or it might be that I might just talk with them 
for a little bit and I might say this is not a great time for me so I'm I'm doing these sorts of things is there another time when we if you're wanting to catch up we can talk then so now what I'm doing is I'm going I value myself and I want to be authentic and there's that honesty thing mm. I want to be authentic mm. to the person that I'm listening to so I'm gonna you know there's a couple of things that I need to do at the moment and I don't want to have this conversation in a rush or I don't want to be not present with you. So I'm offering you to let's have a conversation another time. So not to just say, yeah, stop, what do you want? <laughs> well, in some ways you are, but you, yeah. you're, you're doing it in a polite way because yeah, yeah. if you really care about the person... And you can really well, care at that about... point in time, I don't, because I go, you phone me up for something and you're not telling me what it is. <laughs> just sneakily, what did you say? You know, you're being yes. manipulative. And you're right, in the moment, I don't care. <laughs> but you do care about the person. Because yeah. you don't care about them wanting you know, like, oh, yeah. more stuff you want. Yeah. But the relationship you care about. And I think, for me, it's always around having that long-term goal. Because if I look in the moment... I'm going to be going, this is not helpful for me in the moment. Yeah. And what do you want? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, but if I think about the relationship long term, then long term I can really calm myself. And there's that thing about calming yourself. I can calm myself and do what I need to in this moment so that I'm present with me and I can be present with you. Great. All have right. I, have I answered your question? You did. And I won't, I won't tell them to bugger off anymore then. <laughs> Thanks, you did answer it. <laughs> so, I think we might finish it there, Kevin. What do you reckon? I think so. I think we're done, 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 done. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Thanks for listening, all you out there, and we'll look forward to catching up with you next time. Yeah. Go well. Next time. Bye-bye. Thanks.